Hello everyone, Sarah from Sarah Humphrey Embroidery and this week I am going to turn the video over to you because you have all been really busy doing some of our design stitching, some of our free designs and if you haven't found that page yet on our website, it's free stuff it's called, I'll put a link to that page in the description below this video, do go and check that out, lots of free designs on there for you to download and have a go at which you have all been doing, so I think let's just jump straight in. So we thought we would start with our teddy bear. So I did this little teddy bear design um, really to show you how to do some needle lace. Um, but there's lots of other lovely features in it as well. And it's a really good one to have um, a go at. And a few of you have made some teddy bears. And I want to start with Pauline because Pauline sent me this about three days after you put the video up. I think she just stitched teddy bears all weekend. So it was really... Um, it was really great to see you were inspired by that Pauline and you rushed in and you um, you made these beautiful this beautiful piece here that I'm going to show you and what I thought I'd like to show with this is a few stages of this because Pauline sent me a few pictures of it and I think this is a really interesting to see how um, this piece has developed you don't always have to sit and plan everything to the end to, to the end product before you start stitching and you can see here how Pauline has sort of worked her way through the process and changed her mind about a few things. So you can see here with Pauline's that the teddy bear has obviously gone down first. She's done that part first on this beautiful blue background and then she has made the picnic bl blanket with the basket on top of it. So we did the needle lace on the waistcoat and on the basket and that was the idea of the project was to practice the needle lace. So Pauline's done those two elements and then you can see here that she's added something in afterwards. So then the green has gone in so you need something to sit on. So I think what Pauline must have done, she doesn't say, but I think she must have worked the needle lace basket actually on the picnic blanket. And I worked mine through both pieces of fabric, but Pauline's done on the picnic blanket, which means you can pick it up and sort of move it around and put things underneath it, which is a really good idea, Pauline. And so the grass has then developed. Um, and he's standing on the grass but the picnic the picnic blanket's still floating a little bit and then you can see the grass is growing a little bit and the picnic blanket is now on the grass um, and then there's also some clouds in it originally and the clouds have disappeared a little bit like they floated away a little bit and the birds have flown in as well so it's almost like a little animation I really like it and look at this fabulous tree I think Pauline you have used silk carrier rod for the branches for the trunk of the tree and if you saw my video about my trip to the Buxton wall gathering I bought some of those there so you can go and see what I'm talking about if you don't know what they are they are in that video there but it makes a really amazing tree trunk it's just perfect for that and some felt roving on top of that as well and just put a whole thing in context which makes so much difference in a piece of embroidery and you could see from the beginning of that one with the teddy bear just floating on the background to how it looks now all finished um, and in situ with the trees and the birds and everything so really really super details on that one it's a lovely composition Pauline thank you so much for sending him in and sharing him with us so we've got a couple of teddy bears this time. These ones have come from Karna. Thank you, Karna. Hi there. Karna shares a lot of her work on these videos and they're just beautiful. They're so delicate and I really love to see what you've made next, Karna. And Karna's done not one but two teddy bears. So a Mr and a Mrs teddy bear. <laughs> and these are so sweet. Look at them holding hands together. They're so cute. Um, so the gentleman bear, we'll call him, he's got his little waistcoat on and his little buttons and he's been very chivalrous and he's carrying the basket for his lady friend there and the basket has got um a little blanket in it and some cookies i really like seeing what you're putting in these baskets i think pauline had in hers a little newspaper <laughs> and Karna's put in hers a little blanket and some cookies so we're really fun with what's going in the baskets there and the lady bear she's got a beautiful pink dress so look how easily you can change something you have learnt to something else the pink dress is probably a simpler shape, I would say, maybe than the waistcoat. And you just make yourself a pattern for the dress and you stitch it in exactly the same way and attach it the same way. So once you've learned the technique, you can apply that to lots of different shapes. And the other thing on this dress that Karna has done as well, if you look at the little pockets on it, they are also needle lace. So you can make little separate shapes and you can ply them on top afterwards. And I'm guessing they're actual pockets. You could put something in the pockets as well. So they've been applied as well. And she's got a beautiful bunch of roses. That's in silk ribbon embroidery and a little bow in her, in her uh, well, by her ear. I was going to say in her hair, but <laughs> not really in her hair. But that's not enough needle lace, is it, for Karna? Oh, no. <laughs> so if you look at the rainbow... That is also all done in needle lace as well. It's really amazing. Um, she's done that in double Brussels stitch um, and using some Japanese threads called Cosmo Shabondama. I hope I've said that right, Karna. 
threads and they're just sort of beautiful sparkly thread they come on a reel I had a little look I looked those threads up and the rainbow has all been done in the needle lace as well so you can apply it to anything you want to you just need a little bit of imagination think what can I use this technique for so Carla's also worked on the background of hers as well. So she said she dyed this fabric um, blue and then she has painted on top of that. So she's painted the tree on there and some little bushes as well under the tree and under the rainbow and the grass at front for the bears to stand on. And there's some beautiful little details on this as well. There's a little ladybird there at the end of the rainbow and some little rose silk um, flowers on there as well. You can add any techniques you like to this you can mix them up it looks really lovely the more techniques you put on you can get some real texture on those um with all those little extra details so um that one is beautiful Carla thank you very much for sharing with us so I'd like to introduce you all to Gerald this is Gerald the bear this is from Rebecca hi Rebecca um I love seeing Rebecca's as well and what she's going to come up with because I always know it's going to be a spectacular one and I'm going to read Rebecca's words here because she said as you will not fail to notice I got rather carried away but it was only after I got started I realized quite how much work I'd given myself yeah we all do that we're all guilty of that I think Rebecca <laughs> everything always takes longer than you think it's going to take um, and she says she's not done needle lace before and on the first waistcoat she tried she actually invented a new needle lace stitch but she gave it a name loop through and over stitch and they would say if you can repeat it give it a name and claim it as yours there's always room to create more stitches so <laughs> that was really funny Rebecca you have invented a new stitch well done pretty good on the first time doing needle lace um, but she worked out what she'd done wrong and she tried again and this time it has come out magnificently. You'll see little Gerald there's got his little blue waistcoat on and he's got a few other exciting things as well on his blanket. He's got a little flask in his basket um, and a lollipop and he's got some sandwiches. I don't know how you did the sandwiches, Rebecca. Might be a doll's house item. Doll's house, out, doll's house items are great to put in stunt work embroidery and you can have fun choosing some of those and he's got some little binoculars as well and I don't know what he's looking at through his binoculars perhaps the little owl that's sitting up in the tree up there in the branches of the tree looking down on this picnic thinking them that's very nice thank you very much and just a stunning background on this one I mean look at all the work in the, the tree look at all the stitches in the tree must have taken you ages Rebecca and some little silk flowers as well and some under the tree as well it's really really stunning composition um it's just gorgeous. Thank you very much, Rebecca, for showing us. It's a slightly different take on the teddy bear with the needle lace waistcoat because we've now got a little owl with a needle lace waistcoat. So this is from Amy and Amy has sent Cedric the owl. And Cedric is actually from an old video game called King's Quest 4. I hadn't heard of it, but I looked it up and Cedric looks exactly like this. <laughs> this is what he looks like. And she says he's always warns the protagonist about poisonous snakes. So he sounds like a good thing like, like a good chap and um he's got his little blue waistcoat and if you look really closely as well he's even got a little monocle over his eye so you can see with a little chain attaching it to his waistcoat really lovely details and it's just a case of your imagination you know what can you put and what can you make and once you sort of start to realize what the potential is you can you can go and do anything basically so he's got his lovely little monocle and this is such a lovely take on the project that I did and how you can simply change something. So the owl has still been done in the felt and he's still got the waistcoat on, but he's just a slightly different shape. So if you don't want to do a teddy bear, you don't have to. You can do something else um, and address him. And just want to mention the background on this one as well that Amy has done. And the owl is sitting in the tree and how much different it, difference it makes having these backgrounds. These have all got wonderful backgrounds in them and they all tell such a different story. And I just started from the one that I did and everybody's is completely different to mine. Um, and just a few small changes you can really make this piece personal and make it your own and I love the way he has um, been finished into the circle format as well that's really unusual so well done Amy <laughs> he's really fabulous so we also did a couple of videos um, in the stump work technique on dragonflies as well and we painted the background and I showed you how to make the wings three-dimensional and we've had a few videos on the dragonflies and I've got some more that I'd really like to show you including this stunning one from Carol thank you Carol to send for sending this one in and I'm going to tell you how long Carol spent on this I always think it's interesting when people tell me how long they spent it's obviously 
um, a labour of love. So she spent 40 hours working this one, but look how stunning this is. And it's actually worked on a photograph that was taken by a friend of hers, and she's printed that onto fabric. So she's got the actual photograph to work on and put this dragonfly on, which is a really, really clever idea it just gives it such a, a different dimension as well and the little dragonfly he's got some netting for his dragonfly wings um she says five hours for the wings <laughs> it's worth it <laughs> carol it is worth it and um some lovely extra details on this piece as well so the dragonfly is got the blue and gold and the netting for the wings but if you look closely as well you can see the flowers and the leaves have also been embroidered on so she's used that background image as a design to work on top of and then the leaves are little uh, woven picots so we do have a video on woven picots if you want to know how to do those and it just makes the leaf stand up you kind of work it round a pin and when you take the pin out and you finish weaving the leaf actually comes up and you've got some really three-dimensional elements in there and that's how carol has done her leaves and then if we look at the flowers as well there's some ribbon embroidery in there so just picking out those colors of the flowers and the petals and making those stand out as well and that just helps the three-dimensional dragonfly to sort to fit in he's not sticking out on a flat surface the surface is also coming out as well it's a really amazing use of the photograph carol um it's stunning uh, thank you for sharing we have another dragonfly now from kim hi kim and kim took uh two hours to make one wing <laughs> It's a bit of a competition. How long does it take to make a dragonfly wing? Uh, but she says she's really pleased with it. And Kim's taken a little bit of a different approach and she has done a flat dragonfly. But look at these wings. They are absolutely stunning. There's so much detail in them. Um, so we've got some French knots in there and I think that's in a nice sparkly thread. I don't know what kind of thread it is, but there's some different colours in there. There's a turquoise and a red and a gold um, and some beads in there, some seed beads in it. And the seed beads are sort of see-through, very pale colour and that gives you that sort of see-through effect of the wing so it's really interesting use of the beads and of the French knots together um, but if you look at the whole thing and look at the shading on the wings and how that red colour she's taken to the bottom of the wings and the lighter see-through beads are at the top and that's really beautiful use of um, colour there Kim it's really nice and then you brought that red down into the body of the dragonfly as well and it's really good use of color just to tie the whole thing together with a few colors it's really clever use um, and he's really he's really great kim i love him and there's a little bee there as well so he's had a go with some turkey rug stitch um underneath as well in the little fluffy bee so really nice a compliment to the beautiful dragonfly so we've got some other pieces now that I want to show you from previous videos that we've done. And I just want to say now, if you have made something from one of the designs on the free stuff page, one of the videos that we've made, do share it with me. Um, it's really fun to see your pieces instead of mine for a change and to share them with everybody. I will put a link that you can email those to in the description below this video and you can send them to me and we will make um, another one of these videos and see what you've been working on. So this one that I want to show you is a cross stitch. So I did the cross stitch heart design. It was inspired by Teresa de Dilmont from the DMC Encyclopedia of Embroidery. And I did one in the gold thread, the 24 karat gold thread. And I also did one in the colours as well, just to show some different colours. And this one is from Angela. Thank you, Angela. So Angela has sent her version in of the coloured one. And it's completely different colour Um choices to the choices that I made and I really love it it's it's super and Carol um, Angela has picked this really different color for the background as well it's quite a dark color and that can really throw your stitches forward if you use some light colors as well you get this really beautiful sort of negative um, kind of effect whereas I've done color on white and Angela's done it the other way around she's done the lighter colors on the darker fabric and it throws those elements forward and it's a really unusual um, choice of colors together they look really stunning and um, it's framed beautifully and I just want to mention framing and finish things off. Things look so different the minute you put a frame around them and you put them in, in a wooden frame or you put a mat around it. They just look finished all of a sudden. They are finished before, but when you put the frame around them, they really are finished. It's well worth that extra stage doing that um, and just to see your work as it would on a wall and as it should be um, completed and finished. So thank you very much, Angela. I'm really glad that we've got one of these in because I found this a lot of fun to do. This is my little bunting, my little string of bunting up here. We did some slow stitch bunting and Christine has sent hers in that we did from that video. Um, this is a great way 
to do a little bit of relaxing stitching, not worry about designs or whether it's right or wrong. You can just grab all those little bits and bobs that you got left over or if you've been saving something and you don't know what to do with it or where it fits, this is where it fits. <laughs> It fits in some bunting and you could make these great little triangles. You don't need many pieces of fabric to do it. You can put beads in there or anything else you like in it. Have a lot of fun with this. And Christine has made this beautiful set that's gone over her curtains. So if you didn't want to put your lovely stitching outside and it get rained on, which it might do, you can make them for indoors as well. And I know somebody was making them for their stitching studio as well. And um, I can see all the lovely details Christine's got in there. She's got some lots of elements on those and lots of different fabrics in there so you can really have a lot of fun playing around with the materials that you have. Thank you very much for sending that in Christine, it was really fabulous hanging above your curtains. So this piece from Brenda isn't one that I have made on a video specifically but I wanted to show you this because Brenda has been watching the videos and she's been learning from them and she's been using the skill she's learned to make this and this is really amazing and she says um, thanks to you I've tried something new after watching your videos and your coaching I drew a pattern for the first time ever as a guide to embroidery on my jacket um, so it's really good to know that the instructions work Brenda that was brilliant and you've just done something so personal on this it's, it's amazing so there's some applique lettering on both of the sleeves there it says thankful and blessed uh, we've got some beads on there as well some sequins for the roof um, and this is um, Brenda's front porch I don't think I mentioned that <laughs> so she's done her house which is so personal how wonderful is that and you can just see the window there and the little swing seat and some trees in front of it as well. It's really amazing. And right across the back of the jacket as well, not the easiest thing to stitch on, um, especially a denim jacket. It's got lots of panels. It's quite awkward. The fabric's quite stiff. So this is a real work of art, Brenda. It's, it's incredible. And you've gone down the sleeves as well. I don't even want to know how you stitched on the, <laughs> stitched on the sleeves. Um, but that's really, it's really beautiful. I really love it. It's so personal. I just also want to mention this bit as well because I don't understand Brenda so perhaps you could email me and, and explain it to me because she says I also used a spent shell from a shot that my grandson made as the bird's nest. Um, I've had a little look and I can't quite see the bird's nest. Um, I'm sure that means something to you and your grandson Brenda so if you want to share that with me do because um, I would love to know how that works and how you make something out of that. Um, and she said she worked from April till May so it took her about a month to do it so that's that's pretty quick considering the size the size of the um, the panels on there as well and she says I love your videos go back and re-watch them when I need to refresh my memory I'm always there for everybody <laughs> whenever you want to watch me and go back you can press the pause button you can rewind and you can watch again um, and I'm really glad that you're learning from those Brenda and you're enjoying the videos your jacket's absolutely fantastic Thank you to everybody who shared their pieces with me. I do love to see what you're making. If you have made something and you have not shared it yet from some uh, of the videos that we've made or some of the projects that are on the free stuff page, don't forget to send it to me. The email is in the link, is in the description below this video for you to do that. If you would like to share anything that you have made, not necessarily inspired by this channel, then do check out this video up here because we are collecting videos for our next Stitching Around the World video compilation for World Embroidery Day which is at the end of July this year. Do join in with this and share your pieces with the world. If you miss the deadline for this year there is always next year as well so do keep an eye on that page on our website. I'd like to thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this give it a thumbs up as always and I will see you next time.